Let's do one more word with Paul Martin, the 21st Prime Minister of Canada. And the fact that you're in the studio, I want to take advantage of because you were there on the ground floor when the G20 was set up. And we see right now what's happening in Europe in the negotiations between Greece and the EU to try to keep that economy afloat and keep that country going. They are both on the brink. And I want to know if you see a way back from the brink for both of them. They bought themselves a few months in their last rounds of negotiations. But what do you see? Well, look, the, the, the answer is very un, unclear. The questions are very, are very clear. The fact is uh, that um, what, what, what the Greeks are ask, asking for is, in fact, you know, bigger haircut on the debt, less debt. Um, and uh, the Germans are essentially saying, on behalf of the, uh, the EU, well, we're not going to do that. What we may do is give you an extended debt to pay it down, and we may take, give you lower interest rates, but it's not going to be an answer. So what they're going to they're gonna continue to muddle, muddle through. Um, nobody knows what's, what's going to happen here, but there is a bigger issue, and Greece is simply bringing that issue uh, really to the table. And that is, at the time they set up the monetary union, they never put in place the institutions to make the monetary union work. Mm -hmm. The institutions to make the monetary union work are the same ones that you require to run a country. And the fact is that they're refusing to go towards that. They should have done it five years ago, and they refuse to do it. And now they've got this ultra-nationalism, which is going to make it that much more difficult. So do I think they're going to solve the Greek, the, the Greek issue? Um, I think what they're going to do is muddle through. I don't think they're going to come to a final solution. Their biggest problem is, though, as they muddle through, it is going to constantly call, bring the Eurozone into question. Well, that's and it. And that's the one they've got to deal with. How do you muddle through when, on the one hand, it's a big game of chicken, isn't it? The European Union can't allow anybody to leave because that raises questions about the viability of the whole thing. But the Greeks can't leave either because the standard of living will, will plummet even worse than, than has happened. Yeah. And on the so other what do you side, do? The other, the other side, the European Union can't give the Greeks a, a, a really good deal because if they do, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the Italians are going to say, hey, what about us? Yeah, yeah. And that, those are the questions that are being asked. Um, I think ultimately this may force, uh, although there's all the political pro problems because the, the right, extreme right and extreme left wing against putting in place better institutions, but ultimately, the only answer is going to be better institutions. Do you have any sympathy for the poor German taxpayer who says, we've worked hard and done our thing and paid our taxes, and the Greeks aren't paying their taxes, and why should we subsidize them when they're not prepared to pay their taxes? Well, I understand that argument, and I certainly think that one of the things the Greeks are going to have to do is bring in a tax system whereby people are going to pay, pay their taxes. But before you feel too sorry, for Germany, let's understand what the European Union is. The European, or the Eurozone. The Eurozone is essentially a way in which a major exporter like Germany, who exports 50% of it to the rest of the European Union, is able to export with an undervalued currency, whereas the Greeks, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the, the Italians have got an overvalued currency, which is making it impossible for them. That comes, comes back to it. This is why they're going to have to put into place the institutions that are, as a country. They have to. When, when, the, when they first came up with this, I was a G7 finance minister, and when they first came in and said, we're now going to do the euro, the first reaction of myself, and it's interesting at this question, and Bob Rubin, who was the American Treasury Secretary, both federations said, well, you're going to have to create a fiscal union. And they talked about it, and they said, yes, but not now. Well, sooner or later, now is going to come. Hmm. Does the, last question. Does this give you any semblance of whether or not Canada, the United States, and Mexico should create a single currency? We should not, absolutely, because the fact is that we're not prepared. Uh, we're, not, I'm, we're not prepared to become one country with the, with the United States, and I don't think that the Mexicans are either. And if you're not prepared to do that, then stay with your own currency. Europe is the classic. Euro, the Eurozone is the classic uh, in, indication of what I've just said. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.